What is the point of CW? And why do people still bother to learn it? So, what is the point of Morse code? It's a question that's often asked, but perhaps we need to go back to the early days before we can answer it. It all started with Samuel Morse, believe it or not, nearly 200 years ago, around about 1830. Apparently Samuel was a painter, but he was also an inventor. And around that time, there was telegraphy signals sent down wires. You could send on and off signals down wires. I guess it's also used in the railroads. Anyway, old Samuel decided that uh, sending signals down a pair of wires needed to carry a bit more information than just on and off and some pre-arranged codes, I suppose. And he came up with the idea of actually having a code for particular words. And that made sense, you know, hello, goodbye, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Those sort of things, but it wasn't that practical. And apparently one of his, his sort of uh, assistants said, Samuel, it's all very well add adding codes to words so that each word has a code. Do you know how many words there are in a dictionary? And Samuel looked at him and said, Oh, yes, that's quite a lot. And the assistant said, Samuel, wouldn't it be much easier if we just had a code for each letter? Because there's only 26 letters in the English alphabet. That means to say that we'd need far less codes. And Samuel looked at him and said, do you know? That's what I was thinking as well. Perhaps not. Anyway, apparently Morse code, although it was the idea was Samuel Morse's, the actual implementation and allocating codes to letters rather than words wasn't actually Morse's idea. But he was quite happy to take the credit. Now, it wasn't too long before our old friend Marconi came on the scene and he discovered wireless. The word wireless describes it. Instead of having cables connecting two points and telegraphic messages going down the cables, Marconi discovered you could send them through the air. That was a miracle. I should think at the time people were amazed. It was magic. You could send a signal without a cable. Well, how about that? Well, of course, Marconi needed some means of sending messages. Of course, Morse code was the ideal way of sending messages through the air without a cable, commonly known as wireless. And in the early days of wireless, the telegraphic messages were sent using Morse code. A very efficient system. You see, all you had to do was to switch the transmitter on and off. It was that simple. With different codes, you had dashes and dots. The idea of dashes and dots was created by Samuel Morse, or should we say his assistant. And so the early days of communication used Morse code. It was very simple. As I say, you just needed to switch the transmitter on and off and you needed a fairly basic, simple receiver to resolve it. And that's really how Morse code began. And in many ways, I suppose, it's the very first form of digital communication. Morse code. Voice communication came on the scene somewhat later. But the advantage of Morse code was that it was very simple and it was far, far better in weak signal conditions. You could hear a, a very weak Morse code signal and translate it, but a voice transmission would be much more difficult to, to copy. 
so Morse code became very popular and it was the main communication for military and amateur radio operators and of course the other the other advantage was that you can actually pass Morse code through a very narrow band filter in a receiver which again improves the copy and by 1920 1930 Morse code was the predominant method of communication and it extended even into the war years um, Morse code was still the primary method of communication of course simple spy sets uh, like the B2 spy set um, were designed simply to transmit and receive Morse code and of course amateur radio embraced Morse code the early communication in amateur radio was primarily Morse code yes audio was added uh, in the later years but Morse code was the easy and the most effective way of working in fact it was an essential part of amateur radio so much so that in order to gain a license you had to be able to send and receive Morse code at 12 words a minute I can recall my exam back in 1959 I think it was when I had to go to the uh, post office uh, headquarters St Martin's Lee Grand in London I think it was and take my test and uh, it was uh, <laughs> it was quite a, a nerve-wracking experience but I passed and that enabled me with my pass slip for the RAE to get my call sign Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor but that was all a long time ago why today do we still use Morse code well apart from the fact that it is very a simple method of transmitting and receiving it's also got another advantage you know there's many hams around the world that only speak their mother tongue so an Italian might be quite happy to work Italian stations but when it comes to working stations outside Italy if he can't speak English he's got a bit of a problem but with Morse code you don't have the same problem because you know you've only got to learn a few words and abbreviations in order to have quite an intelligent conversation you can uh, have um, QTH, RST, WX for weather and so on it's very easy to pass quite a bit of information with just a few basic English words that you can send via CW so it does enable you to work all over the world and in fact if you operate CW you might work stations that you couldn't otherwise work because they can't speak uh, that you, the language of in our case English as I said earlier it's probably the first form of data communication it's very effective it's great for copying weak signals right down almost into the noise now we come to the present day we've got FT8 which is probably more effective than CW except there's a limited amount of information you can pass with CW you can pass information like the weather the antenna you're using the power you're running very simply and very effectively so in that respect it's probably better than FT8 but there's also another aspect to it it's a skill it has to be learned you can't learn Morse code in a couple of days although I believe during the uh, Second World War they were training operators within about six weeks but of course it was intensive training but it is a skill and it's a skill that is very satisfying once you've learnt it and it's a skill to be proud of and some of these CW operators can send CW very fast I remember when I first uh, learnt CW I had to write everything down on a pad well now I don't I just uh, I can listen to it and understand most of it at a reasonable speed around about 20 25 words a minute I can cope with beyond that <laughs> it starts to be a bit of a struggle and of course sometimes you hear poorly sent Morse code but generally speaking 
once you've learned Morse code and you get the speed up, it's a very effective form of communication and it's very fast. I would say it's probably faster than FT8 um, because you can send you can send uh, exchange signals within a in a matter of five or 10, 15 seconds very, very effectively. And some of the QSOs on CW are very fast. But there's another reason why you learn CW and that's because you can. So this is rather like mountain climbing. What's the point of climbing a mountain? Well, because you can. And I suppose CW is one of those things. Why, why do we persist with CW? Well, apart from the advantages I've outlined, because you can. It's very satisfying. But I'm the first to admit that not everybody likes CW. Some people can't, can't see the point of it. Why would you want to send CW when you could pick up a microphone and have a chat with your mate down the road or across the, across the world? Valid point. It's a question of horses for courses. So, we still use CW because we can. We use CW because it's very effective. It's great for weak signals. It's great for low power operation. QRP operators love CW. I operate CW at five words, uh, five words at five watts. And I can work all over the world on five watts if the conditions are right. I know that my signal won't be strong, but it can be read. Whereas SSB probably couldn't be read. It's also great if your mother tongue is not the same as the station that you're working. You can exchange information, quite a lot of information. So it does have its place in hang radio. Some will knock it, others will embrace it. Is it the marmite of ham radio? Perhaps it is. So I hope in this very short video, I've answered the question, what is the point of CW? Some like it, some don't. So there we are. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been informative, a um, bit of entertainment perhaps, I don't know. But uh, that's all about CW. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio. You take care. And I look forward to seeing you, as usual, in the next video. Bye for now. But, um, five QSOs now in the space of about an hour. And... Uh, base loaded, but it works very well on the van. Yeah, very pleased with it. So uh, it does the job. Oh dear, it's raining. <laughs>